going? All right, 145. All right, let's start with, this is Danger Girl right here. Molly was the model. And for the entire three-year history of the show, she is constantly in danger of one of us walking into her. She's... Which one she, is she? Point at her again. Right here. She's malleable. She's still soft. Lance made her out of, out of a material that doesn't harden. So it doesn't, she doesn't become permanent until somebody pays Lance to turn her from clay into bronze, right? Right, so uh, here's an opportunity to get in on the ground floor. You could have the first Molly. Yeah, all right. Molly used to be life-sized, used to be a full, full, yeah, full I mean, full she figure. still is, her head's life-sized, but she <coughs> used to be a head and a full body, so she was what, like 5'9"? Yeah. And then one day, Lance did, doesn't, nobody was, Lance, how much would it have cost to cast the full Molly? Uh, the full Molly would have been about, I don't know, 6000 That's 6, it? Yeah, that's what held me back. Yeah, so then, you know? so Lance didn't have the six grand to cast Molly, and you know, the, what, the temperature got up to like 100 Yeah, she melted. Her body sloughed off her frame. When you make a full body uh, sculpture, you, you have a metal frame underneath to hold it. Like, you have bones, but these are metal bones to hold it up. And she just frickin' melted, and there, that's what is left of her body over there. Under the... Next to the skeleton? I don't know if you can see it. It's just... It's, just, it's, it's next to the... It's under that big black thing. It's under that white hood, yeah. 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 All right. Anyway, so, sad. so anyway... It's a sad we're story. Always, we're always almost running into Molly, which yeah. would bend her nose or yeah. put a dent in her cheek or whatever, but... We've made her the star of tonight's. What would happen star. if one of us was to knock her over? Break well, back? You would you make us but buy it or something? Make you. <laughs> you break it, you bought it? No, but I mean, there would be. <clears throat> you've had shit, bad shit happen to somebody. Pretty of your much. Heart. I, about half of my work has been destroyed one way or another. Didn't somebody drag their finger down one of your paintings? You remember that. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, there's been some slashing. Uh, I uh, had a, a guy go after my piece a couple of times. Why? I had a, I had a couple of students try to attack me. Um, all for just being a nice guy like I am. So um, let's get to the and hard thing. thing. Chelsea, yes. like yes. what is perhaps your greatest painting. Oh. You painted her on this artboard that was advertised and sold to you as high, finest quality, you know, backing board for a painting. Yeah. And, but now she's fucking peeling. Yes, she is. And the reason is that um, I found out the hard way that uh, when you paint on wood, there is, uh, if the wood is fresh, it's still breathing. And so the only way to get away away with painting on wood is if the wood is aged. So uh, because it was still breathing, it went ahead and started to kick uh, the nude lady off of itself, which is something I would never do. So what, you're supposed to buy the board? That was a good one. Yeah. All right. So, oh, wait, so you're supposed to buy the board and then stick it someplace for like six months? No, nah, nobody, no one seems to care. So uh, until uh, the until no one even knows about this. It's, it, panels are coming back. Um, for a long time, artists weren't painting on wood panels, and now they're coming back. And the other thing is, is that um, my studio, being a, a poor man, uh, is not uh, climate controlled. So as a result, if it's cold, it's cold in here, and if it's hot, it's hot in here, and that destroys paintings. But uh, you had another very wit uh, witty, professional quality joke that I wanted you to tell. Under this topic? No. No, it was about strippers. Pandemic? Oh, we don't remind Oh, sorry. Oh, well, that, don't no, give no, it that's away. for the next topic. All right, let's get to the next topic. All right, but before, because before, all, right, so all, the, all the bad shit that's happened to half of your work. Wait, bef before you go on to the next, are you going to the next topic? Yeah, segue. Can I just, real quick, before. You mentioned breathing, living and breathing. Lance, do you think the Constitution is li living and breathing like the wood you're... Just real, give your... Well, 
I mean, what has happened is the Democrats realized that they couldn't get what they wanted uh, by uh, convincing the average American. So what they want to do is get rid of the Electoral College so that just New York, Chicago, and L.A. will decide the president. And then they want to get rid of the Senate if they can't control the Senate because uh, the Senate is gives Wyoming the same number of senators as California. Then they want to have uh, the Supreme Court have a constitution that means virtually nothing so that when the Democrats want to have uh, whatever they want, they can just give it to the Supreme Court. But they're thwarted in their plan now because Trump has the court. So, uh, no, I don't think the Constitution is a living, breathing document <clears throat> that can be changed whenever the Democrats feel like it. And I don't think that uh, socialism is fine. Uh, Wait, look no, at the on, Scandinavian no, country, countries, and we're all really socialists. No, no, no you got to let me rebut. Um, all right, so, oh, shit, so many points. Um, the, the deal is that None of these stances, the Democrat stance and the Republican stances, are like go back to you know the, the beginning of time. They're all kind of adopted to to address current the current each party's current wants. No. Yeah, but like the the like We've had probably thirty years ago, the Republicans started um, embracing the philosophy of originalism becoming originalists, and that is, you look at the Constitution and you declare it ironclad and not breathing at all, and you have to stick to what it originally meant. However, you decide what it originally meant. No, I mean, do I respond or did you no, want no, to No, no, well, no, let me, let me just encompass everything. The Democrats say that what the Republicans interpret as the original intent of the Constitution was what the Republicans want it to be. And so you can argue about that. Um, in can, terms I, of, can I argue about that? In a sec, because i got to do one more thing. Um, the whole deal with the Electoral College and two senators for every state, even though you know Wyoming with a population of 600,000 gets the same two senators as California with a population of 40 million. Um, there's the, the problem of the Senate. That well, the deal is that is getting the original 13 colonies to each sign off on the Constitution, right? Because you can't have a nation unless you can get all the original colonies to agree to be a nation. Okay. So mm. you had to give shit to to everybody, so they didn't feel fucked over, and. So there were the smaller agrarian southern states. And northern states like Rhode Island. Okay. And so the, 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 we're like, Delaware. yeah, let, don't, I, we don't want to be fucked over. So you can have one, uh, one part of the bicameral legislature, right, that is population-based, the House. No, in the, in, the, in, in the Constitutional Convention in the 1780s, there was only one house, and it was the, uh, well, no, there were two, but the, the Senate was elected by um, the assemblies in the states, not by the people. Yeah, but still. But it was still by camera. But, but, it, but it was based on population. How many representatives you got in the house that was based on your population. Right, the house, yeah. And then the small states were like, fuck that, what, what's in this for us? Because we're always going to be fucked over by the the more populous states, so they said, all right, here's the compromise. You get one part of the, of the two-part legislature that's population-based, and the other one is every state gets two senators. Right. That's the deal. And, and that, I just wanted to make it clear. And the senators at that time were elected by the governments of each state, not by the people. Uh, but the governments were elected by the people. So there was a little bit more control by the, uh, a little less populism. Uh, but go ahead. Yeah, but that, I mean, that's, that was the deal. And then you could, 
people have, are there, why this was done besides, you know, to get everybody to go along with it? Yeah. Like, people, there are various, none of which I've read, um, things like, well, this was just designed to, you know, to get the slave-owning states to sign on it. No, because there were small yeah, the, northern right, states. Right, but still, for mostly for the, I mean, that's one argument that's made that was all about slavery. No, but the, the biggest, the, the states with the biggest populations were in the South. So, so, I, uh, so I, I mean, like I, I mean, said, I haven't read any. Virginia, like, uh, Louisiana wasn't a state yet, but uh, Virginia was the biggest state. And then New York and Pennsylvania were very large, uh, but uh, and Massachusetts was large, but there were tiny states up north. There was Rhode Island, there was Connecticut, there was Delaware. Well, then down south, there, was, there were large southern states, but the, the population wasn't the issue. Well, it was just what, small, what I, as I understand the, it, the, the one, region was not the issue. One interpretation of, of a lot of this, one historical framing of a lot of shit that went into the Constitution, I don't know if it's accurate or not, is that even in the 1780s, um, the slave-owning states were nervous that they were going to get forced to give up slavery and were trying to make sure they had enough political pull to not have that happen. Well, I mean, I, if I may respond, yeah. uh, the, the original, one thing that it's kind of unusual, people don't know this, is that the original 13 colonies, when they were debating about the Declaration of Independence, considered giving up slaves. And 12 of them agreed. Only one state refused to give up what, slavery. Further, South Carolina? Right, South Carolina. And, uh, but, uh, so the giving up of slavery wasn't so much the issue. The issue was that people in the backwood states and the tiny states, there was a vast difference in population between uh, a state like uh, Rhode Island and a state like Virginia. And if it was based on population alone, Rhode Island may not, sh may not have even needed to exist. They would, have, they would be completely shut out of all decision making. So uh, now, uh, uh, ironically, Rick, that helps my argument because the exact same thing would happen today. If we got rid of the Electoral College, Wyoming and Idaho and Montana would, would be irrelevant. No one would care what they thought about anything. Well, kind of. Um, they wouldn't get the action they get during election cycles. They wouldn't get visited by all the candidates. Well, not only would they not get visited, but um, they they wouldn't get the uh, representation of the Senate. Uh, are you talking okay. about getting, because if no, you're no. going to get rid of the Electoral College, no, then you, aren't you going to get rid of the Senate no, as well? No, no. So you're going to give each state two senators. Well, is, this, is somebody saying we shouldn't do that? That's, I mean. Yeah, because if you're using, I'm using your argument. No, no. If no, your no. argument is that population is pure democracy is what should make the decision, then there shouldn't be a Senate either, Rick, because the Senate doesn't represent pure democracy either. It's the same exact thing. Yeah, but just because you get rid of one thing, turn one thing into a, into a pure you know, majority rule deal, yeah. electoral college, doesn't mean you have to jettison everything else that isn't pure majority rule. Um, if you're a hypocrite, you don't. That's true. And as a Democrat, I assume you're a hypocrite. <laughs> So nobody is saying get rid of the Senate, uh, except Lance for rhetorical No, no, purposes. not rhetorical purposes. Who's it, saying get rid of the Senate? If your reason for getting rid of one thing is that it's not pure democracy, then you can't possibly excuse having a Senate, because a Senate is not pure democracy. You'd have to get rid of both unless you're just a hypocrite trying to get votes for the Democrat Party. That's, that's not... The Senate doesn't work in exactly the same way that uh, the Electoral College works. In that the elect, I mean, when one candidate, we've had, out of the past five elections, mm -hmm. the, the candidate lose, who 
got the most votes overall has lost two of those elections because of the Electoral College. Bush in 2000 and Hillary Clinton in 2016. Okay. And so that seems particularly to people who don't like the Electoral College seems particularly not right because it's it's all right there in, in one like thing that's compressed in time, like one election day, one election, and then Hillary Clinton gets sixty five million votes, Trump gets yeah, sixty two million. We all right, so yeah. and yet Trump wins, mm -hmm. um, and that that's very it, it, it's a thing that has the potential to happen. Once every four years. So as a good Democrat, you want to get rid of that Electoral College, right, Rick? Well, I mean, there are arguments to get, but I didn't know we'd be arguing about this. Well, but, but what I find fascinating is that it never, because you're a Democrat, in your entire life since 2016, you had never been presented with the fact that the Senate is equally unfair. No, I've been, I've been aware of that. You're aware of it now. No, I'm aware of it. But you never put the two together, Electoral College and Senate, because you're a Democrat. No, because I've tweeted shit like that, that, that each senator for California represents 67 times as many people okay. as each senator from Wyoming. All right. But you want to keep the Plus, Senate. Have you ever been to Wyoming? Yes, I have. So you... <laughs> <laughs> yes! By God! <laughs> so, so you know it, 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 it's it's I, I hell yeah. So it's been a lot of time in Wyoming. Yeah, you've seen the Cowboy you, State. Yeah, except you Yellowstone. Like, Yellowstone? Yellowstone. No, I had to go up to uh, Laramie. I think. Okay. Was, yeah. Well, so you know, like Wyoming. You know, it's 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 the second most rectangular state. By the way, shout out to all of our fans in Wyoming. <laughs> I hear there is about a million of you. <laughs> all right, so. The whole state of Wyoming, all the cities are right on the southern border. Okay. Because that's the only place you can fucking possibly live, because the rest of it is just windswept like prairie and Interesting. mountains and like so, you know, I I'm from the state below it, Colorado. Oh. And uh, that's why you know so much about Wyoming. Yeah, because that's where you would you would one time we we're gonna bicycle to Wyoming and buy fireworks that were illegal. <laughs> In to buy in Colorado, and then fortunately we we decided not to because that would we would have died. Uh, you you got them, and you're just no. you just don't want people to know. No, I got Mexican fireworks when we went to Juarez. Uh, Those are great because you don't know how fast the fuse is going to go. <laughs> so like somebody lights them, and you're going to throw it, and it blows up right in your ear, <laughs> and that's why I have to get hearing aids probably in about two months. Uh, is that true? I'm going in for my ear exam in May. And that's why I keep losing these debates. Well, because I can't hear you. You don't know what, what I'm saying. All right. Anyway, Sorry. Wyoming's a whole lot of nothing. You're it's just windswept. Wait, you're like, going in for an ear exam? Yeah. But are you are you having trouble hearing? Well, according to Carol, Carol likes talking to me when there's other shit going on, like the, the TV's on or the washing machine's yeah. going. Or what a, and, but the deal is that that is a sign of hearing loss that, you know, I say, you can't talk to me when this shit, other shit's running, but... If I had perfect hearing, I'd be able to distinguish what she's saying from the, the from the dishwasher. So I'm going to go in, and they're going to say that I've got you know like 40 percent hearing loss in one ear and 30 percent in another, and I'm going to say no, I'm not going to wear hearing aids because that's what everybody does until it gets really bad. Because you don't want to wear fucking hearing aids. And then Carol will be like, yeah, you should wear hearing, aids. and then it'll be a whole other thing. So anyway, um, you know the the, the Senate is a bunch of guys. It's a hundred people. And you know, the, the, the problems of unfairness in the Senate are only partially based on like this whole deal that's not, you know, proportionate to population. And it, it's just a much more sharper indicator of, you know, of what feels unfair to some people um, when it's all like compressed into one election result, as opposed to four years of the Senate doing their business and, 
and you know it, it, it's it's not clear whenever I'm pissed off at Mitch McConnell. When I'm when I'm pissed off at Mitch McConnell, I'm like fuck that turtle looking motherfucker. It's not fuck Mitch McConnell, that guy who has a lot of power because. He, he represents a coalition of people from states that are smaller in population. It, 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 it's, you're right, it's not as apparent. And you just made it apparent, but it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't feel that, it's not as sharp a pain based on the disproportionate nature of the Senate as presidential election results are. All right, I think we've exhausted okay. that. All right, so anyway, what, what I was going to say before, uh, we got asked the question by the director is, I was going to say that all the bad shit that's happened to your art, idiots dragging their finger down the paint, Lance uses an oil. Don't, don't tell him about my oil, that's a trade secret. Okay, well, your paintings take a long time to dry, okay. is the deal. So like, a, a determined person, even as your painting has been done for months, and is hung in a gallery, Somebody who's determined to be a fucker could still fuck up the paint by dragging a finger. Yeah, possibly. It happened to anybody's painting, not just mine. So you're saying that paintings are still kind of malleable. People, people, for those of you watching, this is, I've noticed a very interesting thing, is that people think that oil paintings and sculptures are like the stuff that you buy at Target that are kid-tested. Like when I worked at Mattel, we hired mentally challenged people to play with our toys. Oh shit. Yeah. We, we, look, we actually sent word out to, uh, I don't know, organizations that dealt with mentally challenged people because we couldn't just keep bringing children in. So there was a room. And because we, of labor laws? I don't know why, but we, it was better to use dumb adults. Than, uh, than kids. And uh, that's going to be the same thing for when they test robot girlfriend. <laughs> uh, it, but in that case, the first uh, customer will be a high IQ man. Anyway, um, so what would happen was these dumb people would not, if, you know, when there was a certain level of destruction that, that we found tolerable on the toys. Uh, but they were all. Everything we made was supposed to be somewhat survivable. But modern people don't realize that oil paintings and sculptures aren't made to that uh, standard. They're made to uh, 19th century standard when people were very respectful. I mean, you could put a marble sculpture in a park and no one would bother it. Today, you can sell a marble sculpture to a billionaire and he'll you know, hang his umbrella on the nose or something and damage it himself. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, so I don't know, I would say 30% of my work has been damaged, oh. one way or another. I, I think you could probably put together an Instagram of statues with shiny noses, or busts with shiny noses. Because like there was one in my library at my college, and of a, bu a bust, and people would rub the nose for good uh, luck during exams. Uh, and I bet you, at, I bet you, any time you put a sculpture in a library, people will rub some part of yeah. it. For yeah, you can wear you can wear them off too, even metal. By the way, one thing that people don't know <clears throat> is a very little known fact, but uh, Paris used to have triple the sculptures that it has now. Um, the only sculptures that you see in Paris now are the stone ones, because the bronze ones, which were spectacular were all melted down by the Nazis when they took over Paris. They didn't steal, just go ahead and steal them? They stole them and melted them down for the bronze. Oh, and, awesome. and the funny thing about it is, is World War II was so terrible that that just didn't register as one of the tragedies of the Second World War. Uh, they were particularly fond of destroying any kind of art that made French people look you know, uh, triumphant. So, but you know, they destroyed basically all their bronzes that they could get their old hands on. That's yes. a potential uh, gig for you, is you go and research bronze statues that were melted down and you recreate them and they can put them back up. 
Yeah. Well, of course, the a modern, Jew and a Jew recreates what Nazis were able to the, melt it. The the modern French would insist on something abstract now. They don't. I mean, it's abstract work is ubiquitous for anything outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, so what's our next topic? Well, I was gonna say all the bad shit that happened to your art. It doesn't matter because we're all gonna be dead because of coronavirus. That was that's, that's my segue. your segue. That's my segue. Oh. But it, it's not true. Only two percent of us. Only two percent of the people who catch coronavirus. That's that statistic's still up in the air. It may not be two percent. I'm curious about what the percentage is of people that die from flu. Well, it's 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 this it's one tenth of one percent. The coronavirus. Now, so far, 89,000 people have been confirmed to have coronavirus. Around the world, 3,000 people have died, 3,046 as of, of an hour ago, when I checked the statistics. Um, so that's a rate of over 3%, but it's still the it's, people, we've only known about it since like January 22nd, only about five weeks. Um, so it's too early to really say that the the mortality statistics um, are, are going to stay at, at two and a half to three percent. Um, but they do know, because we've had flu for a fucking long time, that flu kills about one person in a thousand. So according to the current statistics for corona compared to the flu, corona is about 20 times more killing than, um, than regular flu. Um, not as killy as Ebola, which can kill like two-thirds of the people who get it. Um, or SARS, which I, I don't know what the statistics... Um, but it's much more communicable because the deal is that a lot of people who get corona, um, I think it has a two-week incubation period or something. All, none of this stuff, you've got to look it all up because I'm, 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 you know, I'm a combination of of accurate and totally inaccurate shit, but it's got a long period in which a lot of people can pass it on, but are asymptomatic. Like um, a good, dangerous ass virus only wants to be a little killy, and only after a long, t only after you've had it for a long time, because it has to infect a bunch of people. You know, a virus that kills you. Um, five minutes after you get it, isn't a virus that goes pandemic because everybody who gets it, the few people who get it, they have it for five minutes and they can't go anywhere before they're dead. You know, get it? Dead. And like, unless you're in the middle of a CBS or a rock concert, then you're not gonna pass it on to anybody. So Corona's insidious because it's very pass on -able. And kill it. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, I think it's going to be bad. I, I, now, I don't know how bad, but I, I'd be willing to bet you that it infects at least 100,000 Americans. Um, the last pandemic we had, um, pandemic meaning worldwide, basically, was swine flu in 2009. It infected 22 million Americans, but it only killed 4,000 Americans. So it wasn't even as killy as regular flu. But it infected between 10 and 20 percent of the world, of everybody in the world. It was a huge fucking thing. But just not that killy, which is good. But this stuff looks pretty killy. And, you know, even if it infects only a million Americans compared to the 22 million who were infected by the swine flu, if it, if it stays at 2% killiness, then it kills 20,000 Americans, which isn't as many as the 60,000 or so Americans who die of regular flu every year because a shitload of Americans get regular flu every year. But it's 20,000 extra deaths from a brand new disease, so it's still pretty scary. You know, I mean, if, if those, remember those fucking hoverboardy or seg segways, say, say segways got really popular. They were supposed to be the thing that we're going to. So, um, I have a, 
an economist in my class, and he says that uh, as tragic as the deaths are, um, he's worried about the economic effect, which is certain. I mean, there, there will be a, a, a little blow to the economies of the world because of the lack of people moving around, buying things, and making deals. Uh, and the stock market is already suffering. Uh, but uh, did you have anything more to say about the economics? Uh, economics? Well, didn't he said it's not like the plague, but it could be like the plague because the, the biggest pandemic we've ever had, the Spanish flu of 1918, killed perhaps 50 million people, as many people as were killed in all of World War I, which was going on at the same time. Um, at a time when I don't think we even had a billion people on Earth. Um, so 50 million is 5% is of everybody on the planet dead from this shit. I, I don't quote me, you know, look it up. I'm not, well, I, one out of three people in the continent of Europe died from the Black Plague. Yeah. So, um, but all that to say, now my turn to talk. Uh, real quick, can you just, just for safety, repeat what some of the stuff you said, the latter part? What about the Spanish flu killing? No, before that, before. Uh, I don't know what I was saying. Okay. Well, for safety, I mean, I mean, what what we are hearing is, uh, you know, what I'm not going to repeat for safety. Uh, there are a million things you can you can do to avoid catching a, a, a flu that's going well, around. Well, here's the deal. But here's the, but I'm sorry. Here's what I meant to say. Sorry. Is, um, I'm saying for the safety of the camera, you know, the, what we lost. I know, something. but I forgot oh, what we okay. lost. But um, anyway, um, the deal is that they're saying that a, a vaccine is like a year away. So the deal is you're, never, you're not going to stop the flu dead hmm. until you have a vaccine or until so many people have gotten it and become immune that it becomes less communicable, like it, it has to run its, its way through the population. Um, but uh, So the deal is that you want to keep transmission rates, you want it to keep it from exploding in, you know, into a super big, you know, millions of people being infected until there's a vaccine ready. Which means that, yeah, you have to exercise vigilance. Um, so I think, you know, as I said, some countries have already closed down, you know, all the places where large numbers of people gather. Um, and I think it'll have happened in the U.S. within the next couple of months. Uh, until then, more and more places, here's a tip, more and more places are putting out, you know, the, the antibacterial, the, the Purell stuff. That stuff makes a not bad hair gel. So you put it on your, you know, sterilize your hands, and then it's kind of touching your head, which you're not supposed to do. But anyway, your hands are still wet with the goo. Just do a little bit of this, moose up your hair. You might as well look nice for the, the, the corona apocalypse. Uh, <clears throat> okay, and uh, uh, so my, my opinion of all this is that uh, in my lifetime, there have been about 10 of these and nothing ever happened. So, sorry guys, but I'm not worried. Um, <clears throat> even if 20,000 Americans died from it, my odds of getting it personally are a billion to one? No. If for 20,000 Americans, if, it's, if it kills 2%, yeah, but the thing is, is that the chances that the people getting it in Montana are going to give it to me, it still winds up to be not the exact population. It's not a math thing. It's kind so, of a math. I mean, especially since a lot of the cases. Lot, the, the, California has more cases than any other state. Okay, so there are 300 million people, 330 million people. So if a million people got it, one my chances would be 1%. One third of one. One third of yeah. But we're not doing that because I know it's an interesting math problem for you, but there also has to be your lifestyle taken into account, 
your, the quality of your immune system, uh, how many people you know, whether you work with crowds. So my point is this. <clears throat> I can't get excited about this. I just, I've gone through every Democrat health scare, and it's always the Democrats that panic. I, I don't know what it is, but when I talk with Republicans, they're all saying, yeah, flu's coming around. Very, very old, frail people might die one out of a thousand. On a, an extremely bad luck, you might know someone who gets it. And if they have extremely bad luck, they might die. You wouldn't want to sneeze on an infant. Um, but I'm sorry, I just never get these things that they talk about, and they never turn out to be as bad as they were. Don't interrupt me. And partly because we have a modern country, and it's, it's ready for stuff. We do have, uh, the, it's not 12th century Europe. So, um, you know, it, these, these terrible plagues and things never materialize. Well. Um, we're not doing as much as I think we eventually will, uh, you know, shut down some stuff. Do you think Trump dropped the ball in addressing this at first? You know, uh, that, well, that's where our disagreement, that's the background to our disagreement, because we could have that argument. Um, Trump did some stuff, he did the Trumpiest stuff first, which is people coming from scary countries aren't coming in. People from China, where this, where well over 90% of all cases, um, confirmed cases are now, aren't coming in, I think at all. Right? What do you, isn't that what he? I believe so. Yeah. Thank you, China. China. Another, so like, so he did that. Really politically incorrect, but wise decision. All right, so he did that. But then there are some other things that he didn't do. Um, like the, well, it's not, and it's not all on him, though. Here's the structure of the argument. I don't know if we need to have the whole fucking argument. The deal is that one reason, you could argue, or I could argue, that one reason that the dozen, I don't know if it's been a dozen, you know, flu scares or whatever, certainly some of the flus have fizzled. Certainly swine flu wasn't the great killer that we feared if 22 million Americans got it and only 4,000 of them died. Um, not too scary. Um, but one reason that some of the scares we've had turned out not to, be, you know, turn everything into a wasteland is because we exercise vigilance and we vaccinated people. And right now we're getting the word out. No more handshaking for a while. Don't touch your face. You know, wash your hands all the fucking time. You know, try to avoid touching doorknobs. All this shit. Um, the idea is to keep transmission rates low until there's a vaccine. And, and to hope that the fucking vaccine, they hurry up and it doesn't really take a fucking year to get it out there. Um, so, you know, uh, Korea, South Korea has tested tens of thousands of people. In America, we've tested fewer than a thousand people. Um, so we should be testing more. Um, there's plenty of stuff to make, you know, you can make fun of Trump shit on Twitter, but that's an unfair thing. It's not an unfair thing, but it's not an entirely serious thing. For instance, um, there's a picture of the team that, that Trump has assembled <laughs> in the White House, and they're having a meeting, and all their heads are bent in prayer, and it's all God. And this makes a, this is a great photo to use for Twitter jokes, you know that what that no fucking science that you know my my tweet was yeah one science degree in the whole room um, is that fair I don't I, I, there were probably we know there's one guy Anthony Fauci and there were probably more science guys in there but you know, it's headed by Mike Pence who's a Christian who's who's you know not really sciencey he's he's there's, he said stuff that indicates he's there's some science he doesn't believe in. And anyway, all this stuff is ridiculable, but it's not entire, it, but that's mostly for, I think, for Twitter purposes. Because 
even if it's a bunch of guys, and even if it's a bunch of Christian guys who have a problem with science, as long as they do the right shit, you can make fun of them, but in the, in the in, you know, a, a more fair analysis, it's like, all right, yeah, he's, you know, he, he, there's, you know, it has the appearance of being shitty, but if they do the right stuff, then it's just the, you know, you know what I'm saying here, right? I don't know. Are you trying to be fair to Trump? I'm saying that if he does, if, if I get it, if he, if he does the right shit, then all the, the bad appearance shit, because, I mean, Trump comes in two parts. There's the Trump who called in front of a rally. He called the, the, the coronavirus a hoax. And then the next day, he kind of walked it back and said he, it was just the Democrats' reaction to coronavirus that was the hoax. But really, he called it a hoax to his followers. But that shit doesn't, and that's the Trump that I just, wait, no, hold on. I need to read the quote. Right, 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 all right. So if you want to shut it down so you can. Yeah, because now all right, he's just, okay. we'll that up. Real quick while it looks for that, um, and it, it's, yeah. well, so well, do you I think by, by point, Trump the having, is okay, go ahead. The Trump can say all the stupid shit that he wants, and that's just bluster, but if he puts together a team that does the right things for the most part, then, that's the most important thing. He can say all the asshole shit he wants as long as we don't get an outbreak here, or the massive outbreak. Okay, now you can shut it down. Just real quick, do you think, because he, he has like 15, 20,000 people at his rallies, do you think he could be responsible for spreading the virus from his rallies? We're not at that point yet where you can't have these fucking rallies and you can't have, like we, the, the NBA season has another- Free laptop? 20-some games, and then two months of playoffs. Mm -hmm. we, some of those games may end up being played in front of empty, empty arenas. Mm -hmm. And then look, we may have the same baseball, but we're not to that point. My wife and I went out to dinner tonight. Um, we went to the Cheesecake Factory. They always like to make you wait a half hour, and there, were a big, there was a big crowd of people milling around with their little beepers waiting to be called to their tables. And we got kind of nervous, so we were like, fuck it. So we went to P.F. Chang's where there was no wait. Um, but, the, but I can imagine six weeks, two months from now, when the U.S. has you know, 100,000 confirmed cases, when w people will be a lot more nervous about going out to restaurants to, you know, to, you know, if you walk in, I, I go to a bunch of gyms. I think some of my gyms may end up you know, closing down for a week or two or, or more. Um, but we're not to that point yet. Trump can still have his, but it, it uh, there's a guy named Seth Abramson who's written about, who speculated about how much this might fuck up the, the election. Because if you can't have rallies, we're not, you know, in two months, it may, we may not have them. Um, you know, who does that hurt? Um, what happens if shit gets really bad and Trump decides that, you know, we, that, you know, we can't really, we have to postpone the presidential election? You know, they're talking about postponing the, the Tokyo Olympics. Um, or they could have the, hold the Olympics minus the crowds. Every people could compete in empty stadiums. Um, but, you know, if shit gets bad enough, it may be not unreasonable to postpone the presidential election. Maybe they could create like an app for the Olympics where you can watch it on an... On well, obviously there will still be full TV crews and all that shit. Yeah. But anyway, you can shut it down because okay. now we're Rolling! On me, me. All right, so about five minutes ago, Rick shot out the uh, slander that Trump was uh, calling coronavirus a hoax. And I knew, as soon as he said that, that old Rick had been listening to his media and that they had lied to Rick and that they had said that in order to b continue the brainwashing of Rick that Trump doesn't understand science and is calling coronavirus a hoax. And I felt sorry for Rick, but then I got this uh, computer here so I could look up the exact 
quote. Okay? So, in a speech where President Trump was responding to those that were saying he wasn't doing enough, that he was incompetent about in his handling of the coronavirus situation. After all, uh, the head uh, Pelosi and Schumer, the heads in the Congress, have accused him of incompetence. So, now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus, Trump told the crowd on Thursday night. At a rally, Trump rally. Coronavirus, they're politicizing it. We did one of the great jobs. You see, how's President Trump doing? They go, oh, not good, not good. They have no clue. They can't even count their votes in Iowa. <laughs> no, they, not they can't. They can't, uh, they can't count their votes. He added one of his associates suggested the Democrats were perpetrating a hoax like they pur purportedly did during the Russia investigation. Trump. One of my people came to me and said, Mr. President, they tried to beat you on Russia, Russia, Russia. That didn't work out too well. They couldn't do it. They tried the impeachment hoax. That was on a perfect conversation. They tried anything. They tried it over and over, and they've been doing it since you got in. It's all turning. They lost. It's all turning. Think of it. Think of it. And this is their new hoax. Okay, so... I mean, well, I'm, let, I'm, let, no, 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 let it sink no, in. No, why would I have to let it sink in? I'm just going to say, guilty as charged, I'm going to give you this. Because, oh. uh, I mean, Trump said a lot of bullshit in there about the Russia investigation and about uh, the, the Ukraine call, but I, it was sold to me. It could have been via Twitter. I don't know where I saw it. And, but and the Russia hoax was yeah, sold to you, too. Well, yeah, but I, that's a... Anyway... What I'm mean, saying, you're still brainwashed because you yeah, but what I'm saying is that, with Russia. That did Trump collude with Russia? We're not going to do that. Did Trump collude with Russia? We're not going to do did that. Did Trump collude with Russia? No, he didn't collude with Russia. He was he's a helpful dupe to Russia. How? We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. I'm proof. not going to do I it. I want proof. Prove that he didn't. No, you proved that he did. I already proved that he didn't because I had, no, I had the, I had the Mueller investigation, which couldn't charge him with anything. Yeah, because Mueller limited the scope of his fucking investigation. No, because he, he couldn't find anything that he, Trump had done. He, now you proved to me that Trump colluded with Russia. Why are we doing this? What? Because you're still brainwashed. That's fine. You see, if you're that's able to, fine. See, that's... if your proof that you're not brainwashed I is, have that, to... is that you give me. That, that the media lied to you about the coronavirus, but they were telling the truth about Trump colluding with Russia, then you're still brainwashed. You're yeah, fine. Fine. But then why, should any, why should anybody listen to you? They don't have to. Okay. So listen, when, when Rick says that Trump colluded with Russia, it's because he's brainwashed. He can't prove that. Well, and you really shouldn't... Take him as a credible source for anything. Oh, I just fucking, you never, like, buy any of the shit that I argue. That's because you don't have any proof, Rick. Anyway, like, it, it here's the, here was my story in eighth grade, or maybe ninth grade. This kid decided, A, I was a pussy, and B, he didn't like, me, probably because he thought he could beat me up. And he started hassling me. Um, on a field trip to the state capital in Denver, which involved a half-hour bus trip each way. Um, and by the time he got back, he'd worked himself up sufficiently that we had to have a fight. And so he was punching me, and instead of punching him, he was very proud of his, of his new down jacket. This was during a time when, when, you could have, when you could sport down jackets and down vests with pride in the, in the early 70s. And Instead of punching him back, I, I was hurting him where he lived. I was taking the collar of his jacket and just tearing it, fucking up his jacket, because I knew he could punch me, but I'd be, un, you know, I'd heal, but his jacket wouldn't heal. And so and then a, a, an angry teacher comes out and separates us and um, drags us to the office where the principal asks us what happened. And... Um, 
here's where I shine. I show. Um, the, the, the other kid goes first. He goes, he did this, he did this, he did this, he did this. And then I turn to the principal and I'm a little upset because I've been in a fight. And I go, I, I think it was both our faults. And I fucking, you know, that's how you fucking win. That's also how you win in, in, in couples counsel. You, you say, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not perfect. That's good. Anyway, the person who demonstrates a little bit of flexibility and, and doesn't, isn't entirely one side. I win this shit because I'm able to, you won, you fucking, I, you don't need to hit me on two other fucking points that, yeah, it was presented to me that Trump said coronavirus was a hoax. And that turns out to not be what he said. So you fucking win on that. But you still believe Trump colluded with Russia. No, I believe that, I don't want to have this fucking... All right, fine. But anyway. I want to go on, I have a topic, unless you have another topic. Um, nah. I All right, so on the subject of brainwashing, I had a very strange thing. A couple of weeks ago, I was going to tell a story that was very politically incorrect, and and it was it was so shocking that we we couldn't really deal with it. So I thought about it all week, and for two weeks actually, that that I couldn't get it out of my head. <coughs> Here's the story. Well, wait, do you want to frame it? As I'm going to frame it. Let me do it. Let me do it. It'll be all right. Native American? Yeah, this is about Native, this is about Native American. So, for about a year or two, I've been hearing about women disappearing on Native American reservations. And uh, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. Women disappear on Native American reservations. And um, for the past two years, I was thinking, whenever I heard about it, it was always presented to me as uh, somehow the white man was responsible for it. It was just one more in the series of terrible things that, that have been done to uh, the Native Americans at the hands of the cruel white man. And this, this morning, uh, all right, so I found out why women are disappearing on Native American reservations. But I couldn't explain it without, well, on, let me on. speak, let me, no, I, the, I have to explain this. Do you please don't, but inter- you're please, saying it please don't talk, because I'm trying to set this up. Stop, stop. Okay, so here's the thing. I tried to talk about it a couple weeks ago, and it just sounded ridiculous and, and just awful and offensive. And then this morning, I was listening to NPR, and they were talking about Native American women disappearing. And I thought to myself, now how are they going to tie this to Trump? How are they going to make this Trump's fault? And it turns, so they end their little report by saying, and uh, there is a task force looking at the situation. But most experts believe Trump's task force will be incompetent. And I thought, God damn it, I, now I have to say something. So here is my special insight on the subject. I knew, I know someone that lived on a Native American reservation. And I said to her for several years, and I said to her, so, I hear a lot of women are disappearing. Well, why is that? And I assumed she would say, well, a bunch of Republicans drive in in, 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 in uh, <laughs> trucks, and they grab the Native American women and take, take them away. And she said, and, and so I said, well, why is that happening? And she said, because Native American men uh, kill them and uh, kidnap them. And uh, I thought about it and I said, well, I said to her, I'm shocked. 
Native American men are the, res are the ones responsible for the disappearance of Native American women? And she said, of course. Who else would it be? It's on their reservation. They're the people that are there. And I thought about it and I said, well, of course, that's perfect logic. But I said to her, well, why is this? Why, why is this happening? And she said, because Native American culture is not all beautiful as depicted in the movies. And actually, they have a ways to go in learning how to treat their women. Okay? So, uh, I've tried to say this as delicately and politically correctly as possible. If you yourself are listening to this and you're a Native American, you're welcome to prove me wrong. But the, the, the origin of the problem is not Republicans. That's all I have to say. Well, I don't think anybody was saying that it is. But that, that is what people are giving. There was a film a couple of years ago. I know, I know. Fucking Billy Jack and the whole fucking thing. No, no, no. There was... There was there I know, but uh, Billy Jack had the... That's, basically that was had 40 that. years ago. I know, but even 40 years Rick, ago. Rick, there, there was a film that came out two years ago, and I saw it, and it was all about Native American women being kidnapped, and you know who was doing it? I know, bad... White guys. Yeah. Okay. White guys that would go in and do it. And that's not what's happening. Okay, but I mean, in general, you know, it's, it's the closer a guy is to a female crime victim, the, I mean, the... They always blame the husband. They look, they investigate the husband for... Well, yeah, because it, 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 often yeah. it turns out to be well, the, the fucking go. husband, so... But it turns out that Native American women are outrageously more likely to be murdered than women of other races and ethnicities. Okay, I mean, I'll take your word for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what's the next thing? Uh, the likeness. What? Oh, just back to coronavirus. Because people still don't... Um, and this isn't the biggest deal in the world. Um, except it kind of is, but mo a lot of people still don't know the difference between a bacteria and a virus. Do you know the difference? You told me earlier, but go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> bacteria are alive. Viruses are pretty much not alive. A bacteria is a cell, a single-celled organism that gets in you and reproduces and does it and like makes you sick. Um, but bacteria do everything, like there are, I think, like six or seven uh, things that, things that alive, that organisms do, plants and animals do, as part of being alive. You know, you breathe, you eat, you excrete, you reproduce, um, I don't know, a couple other things. Viruses don't do any of that shit except reproduce. Viruses basically aren't alive. Viruses are like little machines that only do one thing, or a couple of things, a couple of related things. They float, or they get in your system. They float around until they contact a cell. When they contact a cell, they sit on the cell like the lunar lander, like an oil derrick. And then once they've somehow contacted the surface of a, of a cell, this structure goes shtook and, and squeezes and acts like a hypodermic needle and shoots some, the virus's DNA into a cell. And somehow the DNA um, gets, attaches itself to the, hijacks the cell's DNA, so the cell quits doing what the cell's supposed to be doing and instead makes a, a shitload of copies of that virus until it gets so full of the little viruses that it explodes. And then you have a bunch more viruses floating around that will attach to cells and do the same thing. But the viruses, you know, they're not alive. They don't breathe, they don't eat, they don't excrete. All they do is float around until they come in contact with a vulnerable cell and they inject their DNA. That's it. That's all they do. They're, they're really simple compared to bacteria or living things. Um, this makes them more durable. Uh, I've heard that the coronavirus can survive on surfaces. If somebody sneezes their, their sickness onto a surface, the, the, the 
viruses can survive and still be infectious for a week on a surface. A bacteria is not going to be able to do that, as far as I know. It's going to, it being a living thing, can't just survive on a fucking restaurant table for a week. Um, so it makes viruses harder to to attack because they're not alive. Um, they're more durable. Um, it also means you can't take antibiotics because antibiotics fuck up bacteria, which are alive. Um, there are things that you can take that make it harder for viruses to do their shit, to re work through their reproductive cycle, but um, you know, they're, they're, they're not as effective at just killing the viruses, which aren't alive in the first place, as antibiotics are at killing bacteria. Um, so, you know, there's, there's different degrees of aliveness of shit that fucks you up. There's something that's even less alive than a virus, which is a prion, which gives you mad cow disease. A prion is just a protein that's got a, a bend in a wrong place. And it fucks up your brain by being bent in the wrong shape and it bumps up against other pieces of, pro of the similar protein in your brain. And it bends them in the same way until your brain is filled with this goopy, um, bit protein um, that eventually just gums up your brain, eats holes in your brain, and uh, kills you. But this is just a thing that's got a bad bend in it. That's like blood poisoning or something. You, tetanus or well, it, it's, tetanus is a bacteria. Yeah. But yeah, it's but it's you're, you're killed by a back by a piece of protein that's got a wrong a bad bend. It's it's what a shitty way to go. Is it so, painful? And, hmm? Is it painful? Yeah, it's bad. It, 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 um, yeah, it, it, t it takes about two months, uh, two, I'm sorry, two years to, to degrade your brain. You fucking, you know, it's, it's bad. What, so what kills a virus? What is it that they come up with? How, what's I mean, the... you, you, I guess, I don't know, all the, the alcohol that, I, that we're supposed to use now, the Purell oh, stuff, yeah. I guess fucks it up pretty good. Yeah. Or at least cleans you sufficient. No, I guess it fucks it up, because like, I don't, I don't. Um, uh, that, that email I sent you says that um, zinc lozenges um, mm -hmm. make it harder for them to go through their, your, their reproductive cycle, at least in your mouth, or makes it harder. So, you know, if you have a, if you think you've been exposed, you might want to have a zinc lozenge on hand to just like protect your mouth area. Um, but it's kind of a half-assed thing. And then there are some things, some more serious drugs, but they're not as anyway, effective as antibacterials against bacteria. How did Mike Bloomberg... Go ahead. No, how did Mike... Switching gears, like, how did Mike Bloomberg make his money? You had that Mike Bloomberg, as far as yeah, I know... How did Mike... Go ahead. All right. As far as it, like, stock traders like having as much information, like real ones, like you've seen what stock traders look like in the movies. It, it's some guy in front of like a bunch of big screens with charts and shit. And Bloomberg was one of the first guys, if not the first guy, to take all the different analytics available via subscription um, from all these different services and put them together into one subscription service so that you could fill all your screens with all the available data on what you're thinking of trading at once. You know, um, it'd be as if, like say, um, you were trying to decide on whether to invest on guys being assholes. Is that a good investment? If you've listened to Lance talking about you know, disappeared women, you'd think, yeah, maybe that's a good investment. Guys seem to be assholes. And so um, you look at a bunch of stuff. You look at Netflix. You look at Amazon. You look at Hulu. You look at HBO. You look at Showtime um, to see 
you know, you watch a bunch of movies and TV shows, documentaries, to see if, if guys are assholes. You, you're trying to decide the question, whether you want to invest a million dollars in guys being assholes. Then Bloomberg comes along and offers you Bloomberg subscription service that lets you put up all these other subscription services, HBO, all that, on a bunch of big screens, and you can sit there and you can watch everything at once to decide whether or not guys are assholes. So apparently Bloomberg was the aggregator of all these financial tools so that you could sit there and decide whether or not to buy AT&T or whatever other stock. And people really liked his, his sort of, people, I think, forget how um, mono-channeled we used to be. You know, that looking at one thing like, you know, it's 1933. You've got a nickel. You go to a matinee. You watch a, a, a movie that we couldn't even watch now because we, it would be too slow. It would be too obvious. You'd see everything coming. You'd watch Wuthering Heights. You'd be like, yeah, we get it. We know everything. We know what's, it, it, you know, the takes were three minutes long and everything. And that compared Wuthering Heights from 1934 Four to what you see on your screen today when you turn on CNBC. CNBC, I one time, I would count the number of different pieces of information scrolling by every second. And it was something like 17 different pieces of different information streams going on some of the, sometimes on, on C. You, people have been trained now to learn how to watch a bunch of shit simultaneously. And 30 years, 40, I don't know how many years ago, Bloomberg realized there was a market for all this shit being displayed simultaneously and he put it all together and he made a few billion bucks selling it to, to people. How did he turn that into $66 billion? Because he sold it to the people who have the money. Like in high school, you always well, wanted, I, I, no, the deal is you'd always wanted to know somebody who worked in a movie, at a, at a theater, because they could let you in the back or just comp you or whatever. Um, so somebody who worked at the theater got free movies for their friends. But somebody who works in the financial industry gets free money. The people who work with money make a lot of fucking money. And so people, somebody who provides services to people who work with money gets a shitload of money. Because then you get a percentage for everyone that that wanted to have his screen? Did he? Got no, not, no, no. If you, if you made a hundred grand on an AT&T trade, Bloomberg didn't get. No, but you had to buy his Yeah, you had to serve. You probably and, and everybody bought it. Yeah, for, I don't know, a hundred grand a month for this deal. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right, very good. I mean, there's a, there, there are a couple uh, movies you can track down about how, I mean, there's a lot of money to be had in, in trading in money, in shit that's worth money. Um, there's a movie, at least one, there might be two, about these guys who wanted to spend millions of bucks digging a fiber optic cable across, under the Appalachians, I think, or something like from, from Wall Street to some other fucking place to save like two one thousandths of a second in sending a, a signal to make a transaction. Because if you could get there two one thousandths of a second faster than other people, you could take it, you could, you could get a better price and fuck other people over on the price. And it was worth spending 10 or 20 or 100 million bucks to save two one thousandths of a second because there's so much money at stake in this shit. So could you guys comment on this thought? Um, so many, you know, Trump calls Bloomberg, he branded him mini, mini Mike, right? Yeah. He has him up to here. He says, you know, so you have Trump who never been a politician in his life. He steps into the stage. He takes on like 17 Republicans, Princeton grad, Harvard right, here's, here's Wait, wait, but real, real quick, real quick before I finish. And... Then you look at the Democratic stage, you have, you have freaking uh, people that were prosecutors, that were 
genius prosecutors. You have like Bloomberg, that's this genius uh, dude that came up with what you were talking about, and yet they they none of them have had the the nearly the success that Trump had. Trump is the. What does that have to say? Yeah, yeah. Trump is the coronavirus. Oh. Trump is the thing that's never been the type uh, is that's, that hasn't been part of our politics before that. There's, we don't have any immunity. We, you get immunity by being infected with something, and then your body figures out, oh, this thing, I know how to fight it. But, but you're sick until your body figures out, well, this is the thing that's making me sick, and I, I need to, I've identified it by the proteins on its surface. So now whenever I see something with the pro, these proteins on its surface, I know it's bad, and I know to attack it. So, like, but Trump was... Unlike in his blusteriness and his, his not giving a shit about whether whatever he says is entirely accurate, his his knowing that he can he can bully and he can use lawyers and he doesn't have to be apologetic about fucking any people hadn't seen that before and they were vulnerable to it. Well, the things that you accuse him of, they had seen with Obama. But you didn't see it yourself. You didn't perceive what was oh, happening. There's no way that Obama told 16,500 lies and half-truths okay. public in his first three years as president. There, there's no way that the Washington Post uh, would ever come up with an accurate statistic of lies. Uh, 16,500 lies. There, uh, you know, again... But say, why sorry, don't you, say it's why only 10% of that. Right, right. I mean, Trump is the most honest president we've ever had. He's done exactly what he said he was going to do. The fact that, that the Washington Post makes up crap that you believe is not proof that he's a liar. If anybody's a liar, it was Obama, uh, who, who uh, was constantly deceiving the American people about what his true intentions were. The guy that, when the camera went off when he was talking with Medvedev, the premier of, of Russia, he, the camera went, uh, the, the mic remained hot, and Obama didn't know people were listening. And so he, he said to Medvedev, listen, when, the, uh, when, the, when, I, when my election is over and I'm reelected, I'll have more flexibility. Tell that to Putin. So, so let me get this straight. Obama was talking about something he could do after he got reelected, but he couldn't say it to the public because the American people might not elect him again. That's a dirty liar. A guy that, uh, that uh, uh, tells you that if you like your doctor, you can keep your Those doctor. Those are the two big Obama lies. Oh, yeah, and, and a guy that uh, uh, says that... Um, God, where do I begin? Uh, he says that it, it was very important for him to pull out of Iraq because there was an agreement, so he had no choice. Uh, the guy that, uh, that secretly used the IRS to uh, shut down... Prove it. You like to shut down the Tea Party. That was proven in court, Rick. No, prove that. That was proven Prove that Obama had anything to do with that. Obama was the man in charge, and Lois learned... Prove, prove that... That he it, it was Rick. It was proven in court. The IRS had to submit an apology so, and a and wait a minute and a plan. Listen to this. They were so wrong that they had to submit. First, I'm going to say the accusation because Rick rudely interrupted me, so that I can't even say the accusation. Obama shut down the Tea Party, which was the main activist group for the Republican.